Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday morning mountain weather update. This is a really exciting update. There's a lot of snow in the forecast. Um, the intensity of this storm system I've been talking about has increased, and that looks like then it will translate into uh, more snow for uh, definitely a few different places. Let me give you the lay of the land here. So this is the water vapor satellite imagery. Oranges, reds represent your drier air aloft, your moistures in the whites and the blues. So this is our big storm system right here. This is the one that's going to hold together and then move down through the Intermountain West. That's the one that will deliver some snow and actually gets cut off and it's going to sit over the four corners. And I'll show you that there's another storm system behind it, which will also play into the forecast. So both of these storm systems being supported and directed by the jet stream. And you can kind of see it right here. Eventually the whole thing will come crashing down into the, uh, the inner mountain and deliver those storm systems. All right, here are my bullet points for this update. So we got a storm system, 1016 through 1018. That's when that first, that first area of low pressure will move into the inner mountain west, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. That'll be the initial line or surge of snow. And then there's another one that kind of comes in behind it. The whole storm will then get cut off from the main flow. It'll have its own sort of jet support, but cut off from the main flow, 1018 through 1020, maybe even 1021 over the four corners. So Colorado, New Mexico will see an area of lingering storm system, rain and snow, snow at the higher elevations for probably two, maybe even three days. So the amounts of snow with this have gone up. I'm looking at one to two feet of accumulation in a few spots. It's not widespread, but it's in a few spots. And I'll show you those spots coming up. Let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about. So over some of the higher peaks here in well-known areas, Kings Peak in Utah, I think you're gonna see at least a foot of snow, maybe even up to two feet of snow over Kings Peak and the high Uintas with that orientation up there. You might be asking, what about uh, the Wasatch, Little Cottonwood, Alta Snowbird? I think it starts as a rain-snow mix, so that's going to cut down on some accumulation. Unless you're at the very highest of elevations, I do think the snow levels are going to start pretty high, like maybe 10, 11,000 feet. That's why I'm thinking a mix. And then it's going to turn over to snow. And I still think even after that mixing, um, we could still see 6 to 12 inches at the highest of elevations of Little Cottonwood Canyon. So Alta Snowbird, uh, mid-mountain and higher. Um, looking at Granite Peak up in Montana, 6 to 12 inches. I would say probably 3 to 6, maybe 4 to 8 inches over the, uh, the Tetons and the Wind Rivers. Maybe a bit more over the Wind Rivers than the Tetons. Chicago Basin in Colorado, that's located in southwest Colorado in the San Juans and real the heart of the San Juans. I'm looking at one to two feet or more in some of these places. And I'll show you a specific high-res map of that uh, coming up. Let's look at uh, the time height forecast here for Red Mountain Pass down in southwest Colorado in that, that area where I think we're really going to get significant snow in Colorado. So this runs us out about 72 to 80 hours, and you can see some of the green. This is relative humidity. You can read the timeline from right to left at the bottom, and this is running through all atmospheric layers. So there's a, there's a bit of humidity there, and it does increase late on the, uh, the 16th into the 17th and early on the 18th. Then what you don't see is what happens on the 19th and 20th. In those days, there's going to be the atmosphere is going to be flush with moisture you'd see a lot more green. So when we look at this forecast, either later today or tomorrow, you're probably going to see a lot more green as we slide past this time frame into the, into the 19th and 20th and maybe even 21st. Um, so let me just take a look at the jet stream forecast. So by close of business today, there it is. You can see our storm system coming into the Pacific Northwest. There it comes, dip in the jet. There's your setup by the 17th. Nice little trough developing shortwave trough through parts of the Intermountain, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, and all of that sliding into Wyoming and Utah, Colorado. And there we are, and there it is. Now watch what happens. You can see the area of low pressure sitting basically over the four corners. It starts to get cut off from the main jet. So it has its own little jet support, and that means it's going to slow down and it's going to linger. This is 1019 late. Look at the area of low pressure. The circulation's been cut off from the main flow. So it's going to linger, 
And there we are on 1020, and it's still there over Colorado and New Mexico. And then it finally moves away. And then there's another area of low pressure, another storm system that uh, hits the West Coast, 1023 and 1024. So it does open the door to additional activity once we get this storm system uh, moved in here. Let's talk a little bit about the precipitation. So here's the forecast radar and satellite. This is by 530 today. All the actions up in the Pacific Northwest, getting ready to move in. Here we are during the uh, morning and afternoon Wednesday, and there it comes. So here's the leading edge. This is in the morning on Thursday. You can see the, the rain and the snow. Snow over Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, the Wind River, loading up in Utah. And it's just starting in Colorado. Here we go. By 5 p.m., there it is. There's 6, 7, 8 o'clock. A lot more snow in blue. Reinforcing shot comes in, helps to reduce or drop the rain snow line. And now you're talking snow in a lot of locations there. Uh, let's move into the future. There's Friday morning. Look at all the snow through parts of Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, and it starts to build into Colorado. And then here we go. Look at Colorado. So this is Saturday at 5 a.m. Low pressures cut off over the four corners. The snow and the precip just continues to intensify and run over many of the same areas like the San Juans. That's where we're going to pick up the bulk of the accumulation in the San Juans as we get into 10, 18, 19, and 10, 20, when the low just sits there and spins. So there's uh, 10, 19 in the afternoon. Low is still there Sunday morning. Look at that snow over the San Juans of Colorado, and there's still some snow spinning over the high Uintas of Utah. So a pretty big circulation, and it's still there. Look at this Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Some of the snow has actually moved north towards the I-70 corridor as the low is going to slide out over the eastern plains of Colorado. And then it finally moves away. Another storm system rolls across the northern tier. Here's 1023. Next storm system slides into the west coast, hits California and the Pacific Northwest. And then that one would translate in to the Intermountain West if we were to see 1025. So it does open the door. Let's talk about snowfall. Um, pretty impressive stuff here. Anywhere you see the purple that's a foot or more of accumulation. So you're looking at the high Uintas of Utah, you're looking at Southwest Colorado, you're looking at British Columbia at the highest of elevations. Let me zoom in on a couple of spots. Well, first of all, you can see the broad brush here over the Tetons. I've got mainly two to four. I think we could push that up to three to six if we get enough cold air in. But there's a heavier pocket right over the, the Wind Rivers of probably four to eight inches there. Um, you see the numbers across Utah. Even Brian Head's going to get on this if the low does cut off. But you could see Colorado, some pretty big numbers there. Let me zoom in on Colorado for you. Now, I focus on southwest Colorado because this is where we could see one to two feet or more of accumulation. I mean, look at Yolas. Uh, I mean, look at Purgatory, Durango Mountain. In other words, Telluride, Skier, Uray, Dallas Peak, Mount Sneffels. You've got Rio Grande Pyramid down to Wolf Creek Summit. I mean, these areas, if this storm track holds and this low cuts off, the numbers are going to be big. I've even got a little bit of accumulation down in Durango, in the city of Durango at valley level, and also Bayfield. So the snow level is going to drop, and we're going to see snow all the way down to the valley floor in some of these places. So this could be big for that part of Colorado. If this happens, they're going to be skiing powder up there at Silverton Mountain. They're going to be sending out photos like they normally do in October of powder skiing. All right, let's go up to the, uh, the Wasatch Front of Utah. A couple of disclaimers here and things that I'm seeing. So I've got 6 to 12 inches here for little cottonwood and even potentially on that lower end for parts of big cottonwood higher up and then less elsewhere into Park City. Now, the numbers for little cottonwood could certainly go up because what I'm doing is I'm accounting for um, some rain snow mixing at the front end of this thing. Uh, if that happens, it keeps the numbers in this range. If it doesn't mix and it goes over to snow earlier, then the totals all go up. And we're looking at a foot, maybe even more, um, in little cottonwood high up. So uh, these numbers are not set in stone. will likely flux depending on how the temperature profile looks as we move forward. What you don't see here is the high Uintas. You're looking at one to two feet of accumulation up there in the high you went. All right, guys, this is an exciting time period here. Uh, this is the morning mountain weather update on Tuesday. Might do another update later today, this afternoon, this evening, um, but certainly we'll keep things rolling from here on out now that we have big snow in the forecast. Take care, guys, and have a great day.